What separated Ursula and Triton from all the other creatures in the sea were their magical artifacts, but the truth behind how and why Ursula was given such a powerful item is heartbreaking. Ursula used her necklace to take Ariel's voice away in The Little Mermaid, and that's only scraping the surface of what the artifact was capable of. And thanks to the Broadway rendition of the movie, as well as the book Poor Unfortunate Soul, A Tale of the Sea Witch, fans learned a lot more about Ursula, including how her magical necklace helped to fuel her hatred of Triton, and become the villain that Disney showed her to be. In Disney the Little Mermaid, Ursula was clearly shown to be the sinister villain who went to great lengths to get what she wanted, and now it looks like her entire life led her into that role. Though it's not directly mentioned in the first movie, creators at Disney have spoken about the fact that King Triton and Ursula were originally written to be brother and sister, and even if the scenes that stated this fact were removed from the movie to fix its pacing, other sources like the Broadway play and the book Poor Unfortunate Soul have kept the relationship as canon. Because of that, it's a lot easier to see what in Ursula's history shaped her into a notorious evil sea witch. Now, there are slightly different versions of Ursula's backstory depending on which source is being referenced, but all of them seem to always revolve around the mystical necklace that allowed her to steal Ariel's voice in the first film. It's important to note that in the Broadway play, Ursula's necklace was replaced with a shell known as the Nautilus, but it essentially acted the same as the necklace did in terms of its abilities and the way it's used to drive the plot forward. Ursula used the Nautilus, or necklace, to wage her intense sibling rivalry with King Triton, but after hearing the tragedy story of how she ended up with the shell, it's easy to see exactly what fueled her villainous plot. Before his passing, the former king of Atlantica gave each of his two children an artifact to help maintain their family's reign over the sea. Little did he know that his gift to Ursula would push her closer to her dark side. Much like the fact that Ursula and Triton were related, the name of their father was omitted from the original Little Mermaid animated classic. However, the rendition of the play on Broadway made sure to include that detail. The play informed us that Ursula's father was none other than Poseidon the king of the seas in Greek mythology. This was befitting when you consider Poseidon's weapon of choice, according to the myths, was a trident, just like his son Triton had, that Ursula desperately tried to get her hands on. Now according to the play, Triton was actually given the trident by his father Poseidon as a gift. Meanwhile, Ursula received the tool that would almost become the kingdom's undoing, all the while adding to her tragic backstory that would wind up becoming the perfect recipe for evil. You see, while Ursula and Triton were younger, their father Poseidon died, but not not before he gave them each a gift that was intended to help each of them rule their own half of the sea. The Little Mermaid on Broadway added in a song sung by the Wicked Sea Witch herself, titled, I Want the Good Times Back, in which Ursula opened with the line, When Daddy Deer was floating on his deathbed, he divvied up the kingdom into two. I got his magic shell and half the sea as well. She continued in the song to explain that while she got the Nautilus, Triton was gifted the trident, and Ursula clearly began to hold a grudge immediately, envying the strength of the trident based on her tone as she got into that line in the song. This showed the audience that the decision to give Triton the trident was only another step toward Ursula's becoming evil. In the song, Ursula continued to sing about her brief reign over half the sea, explaining that it was blissfully delicious. She described herself as using black magic to mutilate, maim, and destroy just a tad. This is followed by her saying that she was banished from the kingdom because of it, and Triton became the sole ruler of the sea. The fact that she would use her power as a ruler to mutilate, maim, and destroy speaks volumes for Ursula's character, showing that she had been shaped into becoming a villain from the very beginning. Then, once Triton had banished her from the kingdom, was when he began to rule over the sea and also began having children. This led to the events of the first Little Mermaid movie, where Ursula was shown as the main antagonist who would stop at nothing to ruin King Triton's life and get a hold of his trident so that she could rule over Atlantica with an iron tentacle, including using her magical artifact that Poseidon left her to steal the voice of Triton's youngest daughter. Ursula's lack of attention from her late father wasn't the only parent that the sea which had that inevitably pushed her into becoming a villain. In fact, according to The Little Mermaid 2, before King Triton took the throne and banished them, Ursula lived in a tower in Atlantica with her mother, who was unnamed in the movie but was revealed to be named Aquarena by the creator. Ursula also had a younger sister named Morgana, who actually became the main antagonist for the sequel to The Little Mermaid. And in that movie, we learned that their mother had always praised Ursula more than Morgana, which shows that at least Ursula had a supporting mother. However, someone being supportive is isn't always a good thing, especially if they happen to support your bad habits. This instance is of course referring to Ursula's mother, and the fact that she likely supported the mischievous behavior of the future sea witch. This would have only encouraged Ursula down a path of evil, which as fans know is exactly what she headed down. It was also mentioned in The Little Mermaid 2 that Ursula's mother loved her more than Morgana, and that it was most
most likely because Ursula excelled at using magic. This implies that Ursula was already in the possession of the Nautilus while her mother was still living in the kingdom. It was also mentioned that Morgana and Aquarena were banished from the kingdom after Aquarena attempted to usurp the throne, which showed that Ursula's mother had a thirst for power just like her daughter. This thirst for power would have been the perfect motive to push her daughter Ursula, who possessed a very powerful magical artifact, to become evil in order to help her take control of the kingdom. However, following the death of both of their parents, Ursula was forced to try to take over the kingdom on her own, and after being caught trying to duplicate Triton's trident, she was banished from Atlantica, which set the witch on a journey that would shape her into the sinister being that was brought to us in the 1989 animated classic, The Little Mermaid. In other words, without the loving support of her father Poseidon, Ursula was left in the care of her power-hungry mother Aquarena, who helped shape her into the villain that tricked Ariel into giving up her voice. Believe it or not, there's also an alternate version of the Broadway play that added even more reasons and proof that Ursula's tragic origin practically destined her to a life of villainy. While the original version of the play used the song I Want the Good Times Back to give audience members insight into the death of Ursula's father Poseidon and the fact that he gave her the Nautilus as a gift on his deathbed, an alternate version replaced the song. The replacement was titled Daddy's Little Angel, and it showcased an even darker side of a young Ursula, a side of her that makes it look like she had no chance at not becoming a villain. In Daddy's Little Angel, Ursula sang about the fact that when she was growing up, she was the youngest of seven sisters, and while the rest of her sisters were seen as beautiful, Ursula described herself as being ugly as a slug and hideous to hug. According to the song, Poseidon found her loathsome, and she could tell that he was disgusted by her. So, instead of feeling the love that a father should show their child, Ursula got cast aside as she got to watch all her sisters receive her father's affection. That was when she revealed that Poseidon gave her the magic Nautilus shell as a gift to ease his guilt of not properly loving her. That only further pushed her towards doing something rash, and rash it was. In the song, Ursula described one of her sisters as being the prettiest of them all, and that she loathed her for it. The sea witch then went on to sing the line, with a girl so heavenly sent, just one spell from the shell, and back to heaven she went. Thus, Ursula admitted to killing her sister, and not just one of them. Her evil acts continued, and according to the song, Ursula used the shell to kill the rest of her sisters, one via whirlpool, two washed up on shore, and the last two were never found. Ursula was lashing out to get her father's love by getting rid of her sisters, and according to her, even that wasn't enough to make him love her. No matter what Ursula did, she could never get Poseidon's attention, which only made her more upset and caused her evil persona to grow stronger. Throughout the rest of the song, Ursula explained that without any other siblings, she practically ruled the kingdom, at least until Poseidon had another child, a son named Triton, who he would end up passing his entire kingdom down to, along with his powerful trident. And that was the nail in the coffin for any sort of morally upright outcome for Ursula. There was no escape from the anger and jealousy that she felt toward Triton, and she would spend the rest of her life working towards destroying him and taking control of Atlantica. What do you think, though? Was there any way that Ursula could have looked on the bright side of things and not have become so evil? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.